Let's cover polymorphism. You should already have a good understanding of inheritance before you dive into polymorphism. We're going to cover what is polymorphism, characteristics of polymorphism, types of polymorphism, compile time versus runtime polymorphism, super keyword, which should look familiar because it's very similar in use, but now we're looking at the polymorphism side of it, advantages of polymorphism, and the disadvantages of polymorphism. What is polymorphism? According to chemistry, the term polymorphism can be defined as the ability of any element or compound to exist in multiple crystalline forms. This is called polymorphism. For example, if you have the carbon atom, it can come out in different forms in coal, graphite, and diamond. What is polymorphism in Java? Similarly, in the terms of Java programming language, polymorphism is defined as the ability of any object in, cla in a class to perform a particular task in multiple methods. This is known as polymorphism in Java. We're going to open up our Eclipse editor and we're going to do some animal sounds with uh, cows, cats, and dogs, just kind of a fun, almost kids-like uh, example of polymorphism. And uh, you can see I already have my inheritance in here. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new uh, package and we'll call this polymorphism just to keep it simple. And once we have our uh, polymorphism in there, we're going to go ahead and add a class in. And if you were doing um, an abstract class, we can label it as abstract because we're not going to directly access it. And we'll call it uh, animal sounds. Maybe we will. We'll see how we uh, load the um, program up. But we'll call this animal sounds. And let's create a uh, public, um, it's not going to return anything, but we'll call it sound on here and we just want to go ahead and have it do a uh, system out print and with our system out print line uh, we'll just have it say animals make different sounds there we go so you know it's really simple and straightforward we're just gonna have it print something out and uh, if we're gonna do that let's go ahead and just um, uh, good thing I didn't make it abstract let's go ahead and just test it out and see what it looks like and we'll do, um, oh, we'll call it animal main, animal main. And in here, let's go ahead and test out what we just put together. Uh, we'll do our, our static void main, so it's going to run on here. And we'll create our animal sounds. We'll call it animal, because we don't know what kind of animal this is. We'll call it new animal sounds. And we'll just take that animal, um, and I like to put it in capitalized, but usually we like to do this lowercase. There we go. And we'll just have our animal uh, dot sound end. And let's go ahead and run this and see what comes out. We can see here animals make different sounds. Okay, that's not too exciting. Uh, so let's jump in there and let's say we have, um, in this case, we're going to add in a couple of different animals. Uh, we'll add in a, oh, let's start with a uh, cow. Yeah, why not a cow? Um, so we'll have our cow in here. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now we have our cow class. Uh, but a cow doesn't just, it makes different noises, but it actually um, uh, makes a, you know, a, a very clear noise. So we'll go ahead and give the cow a sound. And we'll have the cow um, say moo moo. And the cow is going to extend. There's our, um, and we'll put in our extends animal sounds. And then I want to go back here to our animal main. And now we have a class cow. So in our animal main, we want to do uh, cow, cow equals new cow. And once we've created the new cow, we also need to go ahead and have the cow sounds. There we go. And we run this. You can see it comes out here and it says the cow says moo moo. So if we go back to cow, we're just going to do this real quick. And let's say um, we just take this out of here, the public void sound. And then we're going to go into our animal main and run that. 
recompiles. Animals make different sounds because it doesn't know what sound a cow makes. Uh, so this is really central to polymorphism, is we're taking something going on in the um, in one setup that we've brought in and extended from our animal sounds, and we've changed it to the cow says moo moo. And we can also add in uh, multiple animals in here. We'll go ahead and just add in one more animal. Uh, we'll call this one, we'll do a dog, why not? Uh, so here comes in our dog. And of course we want the dog uh, to actually say something. And we'll have the dog uh, go bow wow. And then we'll go back to our animal main. We have to create a dog. And we'll say uh, cow, simply dog, dog uppercase for the class, lowercase for the actual object. And then of course we need the dog to make a sound. So we'll go down here and go dog dot sound. And when we run this, as you expect, the uh, it's going to compile it. There we go. Animals make a different sound. The cow says moo moo. The dog says bow wow. Characteristics of polymorphism. The functionality of a method behaves differently in different situations. The behavior of a method is dependent on the data. Polymorphism is mainly used to implement inheritance. As we saw, we did the extends with the animal sounds. Polymorphism is mainly used to implement inheritance. It allows same name for a member of method in a class with different types, which we'll cover briefly in a minute. Polymorphism supports implicit type conversion. Types of polymorphism. There are basically two types of polymorphism that can be occurred in Java programming language. They are mentioned as follows. Compile time polymorphism, runtime polymorphism. Compile time polymorphism gets executed during the compilation stage. Here the overloading method gets resolved in compilation stage. So when you saw me run those in Eclipse and it went through the compile time, that's looking at all the different changes we made to those classes. That's what we're talking about here is during compile time. In method overloading, in Java, the process of method overloading is achieved when a class has two or more methods with the same name, but the specific method is selected based on the number of parameters declared. We'll now execute a program based on the functionality of additional operator in a different situation. And let's flip back on over to our Eclipse. So in here, I'm going to go back under the dog, and uh, let me just highlight this, and we're going to do the same thing. So you see right here, it says public void sound. So this is identical, public void sound, but instead of sending uh, nothing, we're going to send it a string, and we're going to call it angry. Now at this point, you should note that what if it's a happy dog? I, I would have to add an if then, if the uh, string angry said happy, then we'd print happy or something else. Um, but we're just keeping it simple. So we've entered another sound identical to the first, but we've added string angry to it. And this one's going to print out the dog says growl growl. Now if we go back to our animal main, and here's our dog, same dog, uh, same sound. But now we're going to add a string in here. And we put that string in here, we'll go ahead and just call it angry. It doesn't really matter what string you put in here because we haven't sorted out what the string means. Uh, for now, it just says uh, growl, growl. It's going to recompile it. So remember, this is a polymorphism during compile time. And here we have it. The dog says growl, growl. So the dog says bow, wow, and then the angry dog says growl, growl. So there is another um, thing called operator overloading. Operator overloading is not supported in Java. The authors of Java wanted to keep the language less complicated. Explaining operator overloading, it basically is a way of bundling operations into the call statement and user procedures. It's so that it looks like a math on a paper. You have A plus add B plus C kind of thing, and it's all wrapped up in your call to another statement. This just gets confusing, and it really isn't necessary. So the Java developers decided not to put it in there. So runtime polymorphism. In Java programming language, runtime polymorphism gets handled during the program execution stage. Here the overriding method gets resolved in execution. So far we've talked about compile time polymorphism. As you saw in the program we just wrote, when it's compiling it does the extend and figures out which overload method to use on there. In runtime polymorphism, method overriding in Java, the method overriding is a procedure where a child class is allowed to implement a specific class that is already provided in the parent class. 
For runtime compilation code or uh, polymorphism, we need to go ahead and introduce the super keyword. Now, from inheritance, you should remember that we can uh, look at super from before, but we're going to use it slightly different. It's kind of doing the same thing as when we did the inheritance, but we're doing like what they call an override during runtime. So the term super is predefined keyword in Java that is used to refer the immediate parent class object or method defined in the program. In this procedure, whenever you create an instance of subclass, then automatically an instance of parent class is also created that will be implicitly referred by the super reference variable. So going back into our animal sounds, let's go in here to dog. And if we add a super dot sound, in here, this is going to reference whatever our extend is, because we extends the dog extends animal sounds. And so here's our super dot sound. And if we go ahead and uh, we'll run and compile this, and you can see here that it comes down and says the dog says growl growl, because that's what we had it um, system out print line to. And then the super animals make different sounds. And so if we go back to our animal main. This is what it's calling right here. It's going back into sound under the animal mains and it's printing out or doing whatever it does here. At this point, we usually have it return something so you can look up whatever um, the original class was using. So getting back to uh, these two setups, whether you're using the super to use a runtime polymorphism, because that's what's happening during runtime, versus compile time polymorphism. During compile time polymorphism, method call is handled by the compiler itself. So the program maybe take a second more to compile, but it runs faster. In the runtime, the method call cannot be handled by a compiler in the execution stage. So if you have any errors, it's not going to show up either. During the compile time, we have compile time polymorphism is less flexible as it needs handle all method calls in compile time. So you really, in runtime polymorphism, you're, it exhibits higher flexibility as a method call gets handled at runtime coming in. The execution period for compile time polymorphism is less. Uh, that's what I was just talking about. It compiles it, so the compiling takes maybe a little bit more. But if you're executing the same program over and over and over again, once it's distributed, it's going to run faster. Then, of course, with the runtime polymorphism. The execution period for runtime polymorphism takes longer. It's just a little bit more. Usually in most programs you don't notice this, but if you're executing the same script a thousand times, suddenly that 0.01 second is a lot more. It, it suddenly is adding up a second each time it goes through the thousand iterations. Uh, then with the compile time polymorphism, integrating the right method call with the right method is done in compile time. And of course in runtime, integrating the right method call with the right method is done in runtime. Again, that's another delay because it has to figure out what it's doing. It's not already pre-mapped out. And finally, compile time polymorphism occurs during method overloading and operator overloading, where runtime polymorphism occurs during the method overriding. Advantages of polymorphism? Programmers' code can be reused via polymorphism. Uh, number one goal of a programmer is to reuse the code as much as possible so you're not reinventing the wheel over and over again. Advantages of polymorphism supports single variable name for multiple data types, reduces coupling between different functionalities. And some of the disadvantages of polymorphism that can come up is that polymorphism ends up raising performance issues in real time. Uh, you can see whereas you're loading all these different things, you might end up creating loops you didn't know you were doing. Polymorphism reduces readability of the code. Uh, sometimes your actual code, everything you look at in Java is polymorphism, all based on a primary object. So you could have a very complicated setup and then it actually is very easy to read when you actually put a, your um, final variable in there. But when you're going through lines and lines of code, it can be really hard to uh, figure out what's going on as you loop through all these different inherited modules or classes. Programmers find polymorphism difficult to implement. It just depends. The more you use it, the easier it is. Thank you for joining us. For more information, please visit www.simplylearn.com. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.